Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Tech, and in today's video, we are going to be sharing 10 plus crucial security settings to configure on your Samsung Galaxy S24 series. These tips and tricks are going to make sure your phone is up to date and secure from various angles. So let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so the very first thing that you want to do is you want to go to your settings, okay? Then you want to scroll down to security and privacy, tap on it, and then go down till you see more security settings. Tap on it, and then at the bottom, there's an option known as Galaxy System App Update. Make sure it is in fact enabled. Okay, you might see disabled, make sure it is enabled, then go inside, and basically what this is is, it makes sure that the Galaxy System apps that are designed to improve the security and performance of your smartphone are always up to date. Now take a look at this. You can actually tap on this and see which apps I'm talking about. We're talking about biometrics for face, for fingerprint. Nothing happens when you tap on them, but these are some of the system apps that you need to update for the latest security and performance. And even it says over here to add new features. So make sure it's enabled, put it on Wi-Fi only, unless you have an unlimited data plan and you are gonna be good to go. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is also in security and privacy setting. Now scroll down and again, go to more security settings and this time disable make passwords visible. So let me show you what this actually does. So let's say that you go to a website and you are at a login screen. This could be any website. I'm just, I'm just using Gmail as an example. So here's the password entry field. So let's say you're in a public area, maybe in a train where you have people behind your back. Look at what happens. As I enter my password, you can see it does hide the password. But when I actually put in the first character for a second, it is visible. So that's A, S, D, F, G. So even though now you cannot see it, as I was typing it, if there was somebody behind me, with a sharp eye, they could see the sequence and write the password down. And again, I'm just giving an example if you were in a bus or a train, but there are many more examples out there where somebody could see your password. So when you do this, when you disable this option, okay, look at what happens. When I'm typing over here with the keyboard, you cannot see the entry. Okay, you cannot see the entry if they're looking here. The other thing that is also a problem is the keyboard itself. Obviously, somebody can look at it, but that's a little more hidden. So sometimes you cannot see stuff. But here's the other problem that I want you guys to fix real quick if you want to. Look at this. When I tap on G, you can see it shows the G on the top. And that's actually for ease of use. Okay, so they want you to be able to know exactly what you typed. Okay, sometimes you tap on the wrong thing, but with this one, it gives you a visual cue of what you actually press really quick so you know that you're typing the right thing. But again, that could be a security problem. So to cancel that on top of what we just did, you tap on these settings on the keyboard right here. Then you want to scroll on just a little bit and go to swipe, touch, and feedback. Tap on it and go into touch feedback and disable character preview. So when I disable this, all right, now when I go back inside over here, look at what happens. Nobody can see what's going on over here, and also I'm not getting any character previews, so it's harder to see what you are actually tapping on, okay? Without the bigger font just popping up to see that you just tapped a U or a Y. So you can see, it is now much better hidden. So this is gonna make sure somebody being able to see your password as you type it in out there somewhere, it's gonna minimize them guessing your password. All right, let's move on. The next feature that I wanna talk about, you wanna to go to the settings, you wanna scroll down just a little bit, and I want you guys to go into device care. Once you go to device care, I want you guys to go to app protection and tap on it. And what you wanna do here is you want to turn on this feature. So basically this feature is going to protect your phone from malware or other suspicious activity. Tap on turn on, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like once it is activated. So as you can see, we now have the scan phone option. And what I can do is I can tap on scan and it's gonna go in and it's gonna scan every single app and other system files to make sure they're not infected with any kind of 
malware. So you can see it is going to be running. I'm going to let this run. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like at the end. So I'm going to fast forward. Now once the scan is complete, you're going to see this message on the top. It says no threats found and then you're going to be good to go. It gives you the time it was last scanned. Now with this particular feature, there is another important action you want to take. So you want to tap on the settings right over here and you want to go to app protection settings. And of course we already enabled this, but you have this option and this option. So this one auto scans apps daily and this one here auto scans when you are installing a brand new application so make sure these guys are turned on unless you want to go the route of manual scanning when you remember it it is just better to have it automatic and not worry about it and finally another very important step you want to take is you want to go back okay you want to tap the button on the top over here and you want to go to settings and here, when you go to About Device Care, at the bottom, you're going to see something very important that says Update Security Engine. So make sure this is up to date. So let's see what happens in my case. It looks like it says latest version already installed. That is great. So that actually makes sure that you do have the latest variables fully updated in your app protection so it looks for the latest and newest threats. So that's it, now you're fully secure, let's move on. I will tell you one more real quick thing also. Some carriers might have this disabled. If you don't see this option here, then you may have an application provided by the carrier that does the same thing. But if you do have an unlocked phone and also a couple of carriers like AT&T and Verizon even at this point are supporting this feature. In fact, this phone is running Verizon and my other phone is running AT&T and they're full, both fully supported. Let's move on. All right, the next thing I want to talk about has to do with Wi-Fi. We use Wi-Fi all the time. Now, when you use Wi-Fi in your home, you are in fact safe. But when you go to a coffee shop, when you go to an airport, when you go to a mall and you connect to their Wi-Fi, you are actually fully exposed. But Samsung has an amazing feature that actually protects you even in that scenario. So let me show you what that is. Go to the settings and then scroll down and go into security and privacy and then scroll down just a little bit more and look for secure Wi-Fi. It's gonna be under more security settings. You tap on this and you are gonna have secure Wi-Fi right here. Now, when you click this for the first time, it's gonna give you a quick introduction. It says, protect your privacy, protect automatically, and view your protection history. So agree to this stuff, tap on continue, and then tap on continue. Make sure you enable your location, that is fine. So let's say right now I'm in a coffee shop and I'm trying to connect to their Wi-Fi. Before connecting to their Wi-Fi, you wanna come right here, and you're gonna say protect, I'm gonna tap on protect, and it says protected, which is great. So right now, when I connect to a public Wi-Fi, all my information is in fact encrypted. So now I can go to my Wi-Fi and connect to whatever Wi-Fi I want, and I'm gonna be 100% safe, even if I am out in the public, all right? Let me go back over here. Now, when you're done using protection, make sure to stop it. Because even though this is a free option, there is a limit to how much you can use for free. Only use it to log into your financial apps and then deprotect it to save your monthly capacity. Now, if this is something you like, you can buy additional upgrades. You can tap over here and you can see what they have. So if you're gonna be staying in a hotel room for 24 hours, look at this, you can get 24 hour unlimited for a dollar or one month unlimited for $2. With a one month free trial, that's gonna be up to you. I just use it outside to connect to my finance apps, which are one of the most important apps out there. So I tap on protect, log into my finance apps. Once I'm done, I tap on stop and I'm good to go, all right? Fantastic way to protect your privacy and protect yourself from potential hackers that can look into your device in public Wi-Fi's. All right, so let's move on. Let's go to the settings and I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit right over here. Again, under security and privacy, we have a brand new option known as auto blocker 
which just got released recently. So tap on this guy and make sure it is turned on, okay? So as soon as you turn on, several features get activated at the same time. Now this one right here is already active because I showed that to you. That was the first one in the beginning of the video. So if I tap this, so if I tap on learn more, it'll take me to the app protection, which we already talked about just a couple minutes ago. But here's the one that's very important. That is blocks commands by USB cable. So somebody can connect a USB cable to your phone and then connect the other end into a computer and they can hack your phone using Linux commands. It's actually very easy to do so if the other person knows what they're doing. So by enabling this feature, this is gonna be activated and gonna be 100% safe from anybody trying to hack your phone with a USB cable or even a malicious USB stick. So when that person connects a USB stick here, that let's say it's malicious, designed to hack, is simply not going to work because the phone is gonna block it. So that's what you're doing right here. And then you have this one right here, blocks app from unauthorized sources. So if somebody or even yourself try to download something from Chrome, an application, it is gonna block it automatically. Or even if somebody is trying to give you a drive, a Google Drive app link, it's not gonna allow you to do it. But also you can selectively enable any one of these guys if you need to do so, if you know what you're doing. By default, I would say just block it. And if you need to activate them, you can do it selectively. Fantastic feature, let's move on. And of course, these at the bottom can be disabled or enabled. Again, just keep them enabled. You get messaging app protection, so you're gonna be able to block images from text messages that might have a malware in the actual text message image. So make sure this is active. And also this is gonna block software updates by USB cable. Very similar to this one, somebody can try to update your phone with a USB cable, connect it to a phone. Again, with this option, they're not able to do so. The funny thing is, even if the phone, if this feature was disabled and if the phone was turned off, even if you have a fingerprint sensor enabled or a pin number enabled, some people still have the capability to hack it. So just enable it. So even if your phone is sitting like this, nobody can hack it, okay? They do have the ability to hack it if this and this feature is not turned on. It happens very rarely, but it's out there. All right. And the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go to your settings, okay? Go again into security and privacy. And here's one thing right here that's very important. It says lost device protection. Make sure it has a check mark. It does require you to be logged in with your Samsung account to your phone, which is what most people do. If you go up here, you'll see that you are logged in with your Samsung account. Now, if I scroll down again, go over here, tap on this guy, Basically, again, this is my Samsung account. Allow this phone to be found, and you can also enable the send last location. Now, let's say you lost your phone. What you do is you go to samsungfind.samsung.com website, log in, and you will get all these details at that website. In fact, that website is right here. You can click here and you can bookmark, save it, or write it down, tap on that website, that's the website, samsungfind.samsung.com. If I sign in, in this interface, I can see where my phone is lost. And again, obviously, I'm not gonna use that on the phone that's lost. You can use this anywhere on a computer, your friend's phone, any browser, just samsungfind.samsung.com. Log in with the same Samsung account that you have logged into your phone with, which is right here, and you are gonna be able to track this phone, but just make sure, go here, lost device, these are actually enabled. You can even do offline finding, so even if your phone is turned off, you are still able to find it, okay? So enable that if you want, so enable that feature if you want as well, just, it, it's gonna give you some instructions, tap on turn on, good to go. Just remember, after this is enabled, here's the account you're gonna use to log in, and here's the website you're gonna use to track the phone if it's lost. All right, guys, any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now. Have a fantastic day.